just want you to know that God is a God of second chance. Been to many places, I've met many people, and I've heard people talk about God or try to depict God as some legalistic person who hardly gives you a second chance and try to depict God as this person who is all about testing you to see if you really pass the test and if you're not then you're not ready in order for God to approve us of being fit as fit enough or good enough to be used by him or to qualify for his purpose or in order to qualify for his plan we have to be approved by certain parameters that God has set and if we don't meet those standards then we are not approved by God therefore we are not we are not fit to be used by him. We are not fit enough for his purpose. First of all, God is love. And we have to realize that he chose us. We didn't choose him. He chose us before the foundations of the world. And we didn't play any part in our choice by God or in our divine election in our acceptance by God our acceptance by God is not predicated on my goodness something we did that qualified us for it if that was the case, nobody would qualify. I tell you. No one would qualify. The problem with depicting or presenting God that way or representing God or giving people impre that kind of impression that that's who God is is that it, it puts people in this position where they always feel like they where they always feel like they have to perform to a certain degree to earn God's love they have to perform to a certain degree to earn God's approval they have to perform to a certain degree to earn God's election and God's calling and because and people who are being used by God are people who have passed those tests people who have um, done those qualification exams and they I used to think like that too that people who are used by God are people who have done some tests and passed those tests and done some qualification exams and passed so hence God approves of them because of some things that they have done and that God has seen that they qualify. Hence, he feels he can use them. I used to think like that too. But the Bible says that if God was to count iniquity, who will stand really who is that qualified person that God is using that has checked all the boxes and now they are in a, a exalted position in a 
of qualification for God's use. The problem with giving people that kind of impression about God is that it makes, it always puts people in a position where in their mind they're always thinking that number one, they don't qualify for God to use yet. And that when God eventually starts using them, it will be because they qualified. Secondly, they would see people that God is using. That's one problem. So, they will always be in a position where they are trying to qualify for God to use. They are trying to be qualified for God to use. They are trying to be qualified for God to use. So, God can use them. Because the narrative is, of course, they have to pass some tests, they have to be qualified, they have to be perfect. Then God will use them. And the problem is, how perfect do you have to be for God to use you? In, at what ratio, and because God uses imperfect people, so at what ratio of imperfection do you pass the test for God to use? On a scale of, a, of 1 to 100, how much of imperfection, where, and, I mean, where 100, because we know that God is 100% perfect. Okay? So if God was 99% perfect, that means there's 1% of imperfection in him. If we were going to be as perfect as God wants us to be perfect outside of Christ, then we're going to have to be that 100% perfect. And because of that, all of us will not qualify. So if that was the case, at what rate does God start managing to use you? Of course, maybe he won't use you if you are in the 1 to 10 um, level. And then maybe 1 to 10 to 40. You may think, yeah, maybe, maybe I can consider them, but they are not yet good enough. Because if 100% is what perfection is, then... At 60, you're still not good enough. At 80, you're still not good enough. At 90, you're still not good enough. At 99.9999, you are still not good enough. So, who will God really use? That means that the formula or the chemistry or the logic behind it will be that maybe if you're on the 70 something range, he can use you. Even though you are still imperfect, but he can use you. But at seven, at ten to twenty, he can't. And what that is practically saying is that God prefers some imperfections to others, other kinds of imperfection. That will also practically mean that. Or it may mean that God doesn't mind some types of some imperfections as long as as, it's, as long as it's coming from certain people. But God minds when those imperfections are coming from these people. But as long as it's not this person, it doesn't. As, as long as. The imperfections are coming from this person, God doesn't mind. But if it is this person, God really minds. So, if that's the case, then it means God judges imperfection based on who it's coming from or who is uh, exhibiting it or who is doing it. So it will mean that 
self-centeredness or selfishness is fine with God depending on selfishness is fine with God or not good with him depending on where it's coming from whether it's from this guy or that other guy it will mean that greed and lack of compassion for others is okay with God as long as it's from this person as long as it's coming from this person but with that other person no it's not okay with God but greed is greed selfishness is selfishness self-centeredness is self-centeredness strife is strife anger is anger jealousy is jealousy it doesn't matter where it's if whether it's a bishop or a non-believer greed is greed compassion is compassion whether it's coming from the mosque or it's coming from the uh, Vatican Generosity is generosity whether it's coming from Kuwait or it's coming from Canada. So, why would God prefer some people's imperfections over others? Really? Why? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves. Because this idea that God can use me except I am perfect. It's not of God. Yes, sometimes our imperfections do does prevent us to be able to use be used by God. It is not God who is not willing to use us. It is that it is the it is the carnality and the imperfections of the flesh preventing us that's not the same thing it's not the same thing that God is not willing Listen, let's describe it properly it's one thing that God is not willing because of this and that that you can see in your life it's another thing entirely that God is willing, but the thing doesn't allow him to flow in your life. And that's, those are some of the things we get mixed up. We've been made to believe that God is not willing because he sees certain things in your life, so he's not willing to use you. Whereas, God is always willing to use you. Always. It's just that some things in our life doesn't allow his power to flow. Check it. You, let's use this example for instance. A cable that is broken somewhere in the middle. When you plug it to the wall for electricity, the electricity will flow. But whenever it gets to that place where there is a bridge, it can't go past it. Is it the electricity that doesn't want to go through it? No, it's because there's a bridge somewhere. That is what limits the power, inhibits and limits the power of God in our lives, not God. So this idea that God doesn't want to use some people except they are qualified and it's only those who qualify or pass the test, is a different narrative from what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that God is love. The Bible teaches that whosoever believes in him shall have the God kind of life. The life of God, the life of the eternal one, Zoe. There are so many instances, scriptures, where the Bible uses the word whosoever. Because the gospel is a whosoever gospel. Mark 11 23. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be, there are too many. Whosoever in the Bible. I, I, I did a study one time and I found in the New Testament alone it's I think it's over 70 times. Let's not even talk about the Old Testament. 
that you will find the word whosoever. When the word is that repeated, would that be a coincidence? No, it's not. So this idea that we, I mean, that some people kind of present God as a legalistic God, present him as like a state board exam where when you write the test and if you pass, then he will use you. But if you don't pass, then he will send you back to the back of the queue. It's not, it's contrary to the character of God. That's not who God is. Because if that's how we present God, we're practically presenting God as one examiner who is who has his clipboard and you have to check all the boxes. And if it doesn't see you, your name on it, oh, you're not qualified, sends you back to the um, back of the line to go start again on the queue. What does that make God? That is inconsistent with the character of God. He says, Behold, I stand by the door and knock. If you will open up the door of your heart to me. He never says that he quits the door. What is that kind of attitude? That's the God, the attitude and the disposition of God towards us at all times. Behold, I stand by the door and knock. He is the kind of person who stands by the door and keeps knocking. And even when you open the door, you see it's him, you don't want him, you shut the door on him. That's what a lot of us do. He doesn't quit. He is still at the door knocking. He is ever going to be at the door of your heart knocking. He is consistent. His love is unconditional. Let's stop presenting God as a conditional God. Conditional on your performance. Condi that His love is conditional on anything that we do. If that was the case, He would not have died for us while we were yet sinners, not even seeking Him. I think that if we really want people to be saved, if we want unbelievers to come to God, to come to Christ, we ourselves must go and redefine by the word of God our idea of who God is. Because that's one of the things that's pushing people away. I mean, people give this impression that once you've missed it, you've missed it. What's that? Where's that in the Bible? If you miss it, God is willing right in that moment to restore you. If you miss your way, God is right then, right there, immediately, forever. And not just in one instance. Some people present God like this uh, examiner who he sees you and says, oh, you're not ready, and sends you back. And like his attitude towards us is that of an examiner. Like those external assessors who come to inspect a property to come to inspect your production facility and when you are not meeting up they mark you wrong and then the government closes down your facility that's not who god is is ever committed to working with you wherever you are to bring you to the next level that you want to be because if god was looking for who was qualified enough who will never be qualified ever willing to help you no matter where you are and it's not the type of God that sent you back and said go work on yourself when you're ready then I will accept you so let's stop I mean it's it's very annoying when people present God like look when you miss it you miss it this is who God is you have broken some principle so God is not going to bless you God is not inconsistent we are the ones who are inconsistent. God is ever consistent. God is not a variable. He is a constant. He is constantly in love with us. He is constantly compassionate. He is constantly merciful. 
and even when we miss it, he is still kind and merciful to restore us. God's plan will not be a good one if it doesn't have a margin of error. Even human plans, the things that we plan, the, the apps we design, the plans and systems we design, our websites, our internet uh, interface that we create for people to interact with us, everything, human systems have a margin of error. Because why? Because they are trying to, their idea is not to make you miss it. Their idea is to make it easy for you to get it. So, of course, people design their systems with the margin of error because, for instance, when you go on Amazon Prime, your orders, when you click it, you see your history. But that's not the only part where your order is. If you look on the left of the screen, where there are certain boxes telling you about certain uh, some of their services and products you still find there your order so they want you to if they don't you if you don't see it here if you miss it here you're gonna see it here if you don't if you miss it here there are several options that human beings design in our systems because we want people to get it we want our customers to come to us so we want to make it as easy as possible for them to not miss it if human systems are like that, how about God's system? If the one who created, the one who created your navigation app, the one you use on your phone, put it on your dashboard and takes you to where you're going, and when you miss the way it recalculates, if a human being is that ingenious if a human being is that compassionate to design an app to not say okay when he moves the way three times just just shut down they can still write the code like that on your navigation app that when you miss the way three times or four times six times it warns you and shuts down just to make you see that look you need to concentrate you know that's how a lot of people present god a lot of people present god like is that thing he once he tries second time third time fourth time sixth time eighth time you know what he say you know what? when you're ready let me know that's not who god is he never his system never stops recalculating you know what i love one of the things i love about my phone the apps on my phone my best app is not even the bible app because i have my bible i don't i don't need the app to read the bible it is the navigator the navigator is a fantastic app because number one it leads me to where i'm going so i don't have to know the way there's so much i can preach on this but let's not go there i don't have to know the way once i put it it leads me there i can miss the way it will recalculate but that's an interesting feature that no matter how many times I miss the way it recalculates. But what I even love about that is that it doesn't stop recalculating. Don't mind that you don't see my face sometimes. Uh, the weather, yeah. I just passed by a bridge, so that's why. It never stops recalculating. It doesn't stop recalculating. So miss your way a hundred times it will recalculate it its ability to recalculate its disposition to recalculate is eternal <laughs> so don't let anybody deceive you or intimidate you or make you fearful that you've missed your plan god plan of god for your life you've missed it you've broken some principle what principle if god's plan doesn't have a margin of error that when you miss it you can't get back on track that's even that's even if you miss it then it's not a good plan if it's a good plan it will recalculate and it doesn't stop recalculating that is so beautiful it does not stop recalculating and one other feature i love about the applic the application the navigator is that i use it when i don't know the way 
Oh, you know what? I also use it when I know the way. I use it on this route. I drive on this route almost every day. I use it. It's on, probably on right now. You know why I use it on the on the on the path I know. It's understandable to use this on a road you don't know. I don't know where traffic is. I may know the way, but there might have been an accident 10 miles off on my course, but I don't know. And it has happened to me before where I've regretted not using the navigator because, yes, I know the way, but I don't know what's happening on the way. And the app knows because it sees it, picks it via the satellite, and reroutes me through a path. Glory to God. So I can avoid where traffic is. God knows the way of the righteous. He will always lead you in the right path. And let's say you go through even you you were not sensitive enough to his leading and you go through where there's the place where there's traffic. He will still help you. He doesn't give up on you. He would see you through. While you are in the traffic, it's recalculating and suggesting more other routes to you. Because that my app has that feature. Once I see there's traffic and I'm already in the traffic, I'm looking for alternative roads and it just can tell me, take the exit and then go through this path. And so why would God's plan not be that good enough? God is at least as kind as that. God is at least as compassionate. God is at least as merciful as that. Let no one deceive you. Our God is a good God. It's not God a God of a second chance. He is always a God of another chance. God bless you. I hope. Let me get out of this tunnel so I can say goodbye. But let's remember that God is good. And God is always good. He never stops being good. That's who he is. It is his loving kindness and his grace and mercy that brings you out of any kind of situation you may find yourself. God is for you. He will never leave nor forsake you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Remember, God's love is unconditional. It never stops. It never ceases. God bless you.